Namaste. This is David Hawthorne at astroview.com. Today is the 27th of December, 2016. The following is the Vedic Astrology Horoscope for the Russian Defense Ministry jetliner that crashed on December 25th, 2016, about two minutes after it left the airport at 5.27 a.m. in Sochi, Russia. So this is another case in point, another illustration of the importance of taking a look at the horoscope for the time of departure of an airplane. So when you're booking a flight someplace, you might want to look at the charts for different options and choose a chart that is not afflicted. Now for this particular chart, at the time of departure, the eighth sign of the zodiac was ascending or rising at 7 degrees 41 minutes of Scorpio. Now the eighth sign, Scorpio, is a water sign and a fixed sign. But the eighth sign also relates to the eighth house. You can take any rising sign and relate it to the house with the same number. So this eighth sign relates to the eighth house, which is called Rondra, which means transformations, vulnerability, accidents, and death-like experiences. Now for the Scorpio rising sign, there are five planets that will never cause harm. These are Sun, ruling the tenth house, Moon, ruling the ninth house, Mercury ruling the 11th house, Jupiter ruling the 2nd house, and Saturn ruling the 4th house. Now for Scorpio rising, the 6th house ruler, Mars, and the 12th house ruler, Venus, become functional malefic planets. We say of these 12 houses, 9 are favorable, but 3 are not. The 6th, 8th, and 12th houses are called Dustan Babas, inauspicious houses. Planets going into the 6th, 8th, or 12th become weak automatically. Planets ruling the 6th, 8th, and 12th house can, in some cases, cause adverse effects. And it has to do with the position of the Multracone sign. Every planet rules its own sign, every planet has an exaltation sign, and every planet rules a multracone sign, and every planet rules a debilitation sign. The multracone signs are 1, 4, 5, 6, 7, 9, and 11. If a multracone sign falls in a Dustan Bhava, an auspicious house, the 6, 8, or 12, then that ruler becomes a functional malefic planet for that rising sign only. So in this case, the sixth house contains the multracone sign for Mars, which is Aries. The eighth house does not contain a multracone sign. The twelfth house is, contains the multracone sign for Venus, which is Libra. Now Rahu and Ketu are functional malefic planets for every rising sign. Nobody escapes. But the important thing to evaluate is how is that planet operating in a chart? See, Rahu and Ketu, and for Scorpio, Venus and Mars can be benign. They can be causing no trouble in the natal chart. Or they can be causing afflictions. What causes an affliction is a close conjunction, like these two are within a degree and a half of each other. And any planet within five degrees of the rising sign degree has an impact. So this particular degree is seven, so it starts at two degrees and it goes up to 12 degrees. 
If a planet is a functional benefic planet, it will give something positive. If it's a functional malefic planet, it will give adverse effects. So now we can judge the horoscope. We have Saturn in the first house. It deals with fixed assets, property, and conveyances. Conveyances means transportation. So anything from automobiles to motorcycles to airplanes, trains, buses, boats, whatever. Now Sun, <clears throat> at nine degrees, ruling the tenth house of karma, professional life, and ruling the government, is well placed in the second house of Sagittarius. But at nine degrees, it is under the fifth aspect of this Rahu. Rahu and K2 throw aspects five, seven, and nine houses from where they sit. So this Rahu is crushing the sun. It's within two degrees. So it destroys the tenth house. It destroys government property. The other main issue here is that Rahu and Ketu are within the five degree orb. This goes up to 1241. These are 1134. So technically this Rahu and Ketu are causing some adverse effects in the houses they occupy and in the houses they aspect. So Rahu is destroying this 10th house of professional life, the second house of wealth, status, and continuation of family life, so it causes discontinuation of family life. It undermines the strength of the sun, and it undermines the strength of Mercury. Ra, who's also afflicting the fourth house of conveyances, ruled by Saturn. It undermines the strength of Saturn. Ra, whose ninth aspect is into the sixth house of accidents, mental tension, and enemies. So there could be some enemies involved in the destruction of that airplane. K2 is also afflicting the fourth house of conveyances, and its fifth aspect is into the eighth house of accidents and death-like experiences. Its seventh aspect is into the tenth house of professional life and career and karma. And its ninth aspect is into the twelfth house of foreign lands. And it was tra uh, traveling from Russia to Syria. Twelfth house also losses, separations, and end of life. Eighth house is also death like experiences. Now because Rahu and Ketu are in odd signs, the odd signs are 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, and 11, then they can impact only other planets in odd signs by conjunction or aspect. Because they're close to the rising sign degree, then they undermine the strength of the rulers of those multricone signs involved. So Rahu is undermining the strength of Jupiter. Jupiter rules his house here. Rahu is undermining the strength of Saturn. Rahu is undermining the strength of Mars. K2 is undermining the strength of Sun. K2 is undermining the strength of Venus. Moon is badly placed in the 12th house of losses and expenses and separations and end of life, and it's in a house afflicted by K2. Venus is weak because the, its house is afflicted, and Venus is past 25 degrees in old age. Old age planets are weak, so Venus is weak, and Jupiter is in old age weak. Now the other main issue is Mars is a functional malefic planet. 
it is afflicting K2, and K2 is afflicting Mars. Rahu is afflicting Mars, and Mars is afflicting Rahu. Mars also is within the five degree orb <clears throat> of seven degrees. So Mars afflicts the house it occupies and the houses it aspects. It throws an aspect four houses away, seven houses away, and eight houses away. So it's undermining the fourth house of transportation, the seventh house of relationships and comforts living abroad. It's afflicting the tenth house of professional life, and it's afflicting the eleventh house of friendships, income, and gains, ruled by, with Jupiter sitting here, ruled by Mercury. And Mars, we know, is violence and explosions, fires, military. And this was a military jetliner. And Sun, which is government property, was also involved. So we can see there's really no planet in this chart strong enough to manage the chart. Sun is afflicted and it's in a house that's afflicted. Mercury's in a house that is afflicted. The multi sign for Venus, Libra, is afflicted. Mars is afflicted. Jupiter is ruled by Mercury, which is in a house that's afflicted. And Jupiter's house of Sagittarius is afflicted. No relief, no protection. Now we take the look at the Mahadasha, the main period, and we look at the Antradasha, the sub-period. So Jupiter is the main ruler, <clears throat> and Jupiter's house is afflicted. And Jupiter's landlord, Mercury, is in a house that's afflicted. A planet cannot give greater rewards than the strength of its landlord, its dispositor. Saturn is the operating planet. The Antardasha is the, uh, the current operating planet. And Saturn rules the fourth house conveyances. And Saturn's house is afflicted by Mars, Ketu, and Rahu. And Saturn is in old age degrees. So these are the main points on how these planets are operating in this chart and the timing of events. The lesson is we just make sure we take a look at a horoscope for the time of departure of an aircraft or a train or a bus or a boat. Even if you're going off on vacation or some business journey and you're driving someplace, not a bad idea to take a look at the chart. If you're going someplace, let's say for a month or something, then take the time to Look at the charts until you find a chart that is free from any afflictions. You want to have a good functional benefic main period, a functional benefic sub-period, and you want all the planets well-placed and free from any afflictions. You want to keep Rahu and Ketu and any functional malefic planet away from the rising sign degree. And you want to choose a rising sign that has the fewest functional malefic planets. Scorpio and a number of other rising signs have four functional malefic planets. Taurus, Virgo, and Pisces rising sign persons have five functional malefic planets. So the best rising signs, number one would be Gemini, because Gemini only has two functional malefic planets, Rahu and Ketu. And that's followed by Aries, Leo, Libra, and Sagittarius, because they have only three functional malefic planets. Okay, these are the main points. You can send me an email if you have any questions to david at astroview.com. Namaste. And our hearts and prayers are with the families and loved ones of these passengers who are on this jetliner. Namaste.